Goblin launch detected. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. You'll also be excited to hear that Flipside Gaming is doing a giveaway for Double Masters. If you place an order of $10 or more between July 6th and August 7th, you'll be entered for your chance to win the box. Alternatively, you can send a stamped, self-addressed envelope or postcard to Flipside Gaming to be entered to win as well. It's one entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game is a multi-zone matchup, with me playing Tristani, Keeping Beast Within, Emeria Shepherd, Temple of Plenty, Sakura Tribe Elder, Greater Good, Regal Force, and Restoration Angel. Nick is playing as Stitcher Garolf, Keeping a Worn Power Stone, Burnished Heart, Sky Diamond, Two Islands, Swiftfoot Boots, and a Thran Dynamo. Martin is playing his Cycling Zer deck, Keeping a Flooded Strand, Fleshbag Marauder, Remote Isle, Atacar Wastes, Underground Sea, Diplomatic Immunity, and Mariki Reberit. Max is playing Brutoclad, Keeping a Soul Separator, Treasure Map, Mere Turbine, Cackling Counterpart, Commander Sphere, and Two Mountains. I win the die roll and start us off. I play a tap Temple of Plenty, scrying one and keeping it on top. Nick plays an island. Martin plays his Flooded Strand, losing one life as he sacrifices it to find a land and passes. Max plays a mountain. I play a forest and cast Steve. I sacrifice him at the end of my turn to find a basic and save some time. Nick plays an island and casts Sky Diamond. Martin draws and plays Atticar Wastes. Max plays a mountain and casts a treasure map. I play a Bountiful Promenade and cast Tristani before passing. Nick plays an island and casts Thran Dynamo. The Dynamo is then tapped for a Worn Power Stone and he passes turn. At the end of turn, Martin cycles Remote Isle. Martin plays a Swamp and casts Mareki. Max plays a Foundry of the Consoles and he pays 3 mana for a Commander Sphere and passes to me. I play a Plains and cast Elvish Visionary. It enters, gaining me 1 life from Tristani, and then drawing me a card from its own Enter the Battlefield effect. I then pay 2 more mana for Fauna Shaman, gaining 2 more life, and passing to Nick. Nick plays an Island and gets to cast a Conduit of Ruin. He goes to find a creature card, putting on top of his library, Coslick the Great Distortion. He then casts Swiftfoot Boots and slaps them onto his Eldrazi before passing. At the end of turn, Max activates his treasure map to scry one. Martin plays a Plains and casts Zur. He then passes. Max plays a Mountain and has enough mana to cast Fairy Artisan. I draw and play a Forest. I pay one mana to activate the Fauna Shaman and I discard Regal Force and go and find a Karmic Guide. I then cast the Karmic Guide, which enters, and Max gains a token copy of it thanks to Fairy Artisan. I gain 2 life, and my guide brings back the Regal Force, which also has Max gaining a token copy of it, as it replaces the token copy of Karmic Guide with the Artisan Trigger. Max then draws a card from the Force Entering, and then I gain 5 life, and draw 4 cards from my Force Entering. I then move to my end step, discarding Thrag Tusk and passing. Nick draws Kozilek, and doesn't want to cast him with Mariki on the board. He casts Garolf instead, which Max gains a token copy of. He then moves the boots over onto his commander, and Martin doesn't try and steal Garolf. Nick then plays a Burnished Heart and goes to combat. He swings the Conduit at me, which I block with the Visionary. At the end of turn, Martin steals the Conduit with Mariki. Martin plays an Underground Sea and casts a Fleshbag Marauder for only one black because of the reduction given by the Conduit of Ruin. Max gains a token copy of it, and with his copy's sacrifice effect on the stack, Nick activates Garolf. We each mill our top three, and I'm the only one who hits a creature. It's exiled, and Nick makes a zombie token which he immediately sacrifices, along with the Burnished Heart. 
Martin sacrifices his flesh bag and the conduit, and Max loses both of his creatures, while I lose a Karmic Guide and the Fauna Shaman. Moving to combat, Martin then swings Zur at Max. He gets to tutor for his enchantment first, and Max activates his treasure map again, scrying one. Martin grabs a Phyrexian Arena and deals one to Max. In his post-combat main phase, Martin then puts diplomatic immunity onto his commander. Max casts an Izzet Signet in his main phase, and then a Soul Separator, and passes. I play a Plains and go through my yard. I don't do anything, and pass to Nick. Nick untaps and casts an Artisan of Kozilek. As it's been cast from his hand, he gets to bring back the Conduit from his graveyard. Nick then moves the Swiftfoot Boots to the Artisan, and swings it at Martin. Martin sacrifices two permanents and takes the hit, and Nick passes turn. Martin loses one and draws from the arena and for turn. He goes at Max again, who scries one with the map. He gets the third counter and transforms, while Martin finds a ghostly prison for the field. Max then takes the one, and Martin then casts a curator's ward onto Zur in his post-combat main phase. Max plays a mountain and thankfully can make blue with his mana rocks and has enough to cast Bruticlad. He moves to combat, making a mirror token, and then has it become a treasure token. He passes, and at the end of turn, I flash in Restoration Angel. I gain 4 life as it enters, and flicker the Regal Force. The Force then enters, gaining me 5 more life, and drawing me 2 cards. I draw for turn, and play a Riftstone Portal, which is often just better in my graveyard, but what can you do? I cast a Greater Good, and pass to Nick. Nick plays an Island, and casts Kozilek. He gets the cast trigger, which has Max responding by sacrificing his treasures and tapping some lands to spell Swindle Kozilek. The Eldrazi is countered, and Max gains 10 treasure tokens, while Nick then draws enough cards until his hand is at 7 again. Moving to combat, it's easy to understand why Nick swings the Conduit and the Artisan at Max. Max resolves the Annihilator trigger, and then sacrifices enough treasures to activate the Soul Separator. He exiles his Fairy Artisan, and makes a 1-1 token copy of the Artisan, and a 2-2 Black Zombie. He then blocks the Artisan with a 2-2 Zombie, and takes a hit from the Conduit. Nick then passes. Martin loses one from the Arena, drawing for it, and for turn. He plays a Caves of Koilos, and then drops new perspectives, drawing three cards as the enchantment enters. Zer once more goes at Max, and Martin looks for a three or less costing enchantment. He grabs Propaganda, and Max then takes the one, and Martin passes. Max plays a Seed of the Synod, and then taps 5 for a Mirror Turbine. He taps the Turbine for a Mirror Token, and goes to combat. Bruticlad triggers during his combat step, making another Mirror Token, and Max has the Treasure Tokens transform into the Fairy Artisan Tokens as well. Responding to this, I use the Beast Within on the Fairy Artisan Token, and responding to that, Max uses Cackling Counterpart to make another one. The original is destroyed, and Max makes a Beast. All of his tokens then become the Artisan, but he doesn't attack though, and passes. I draw, and sacrifice the Regal Force to greater good, drawing 5 and discarding 3. I really don't want to cast any creatures since Max will get 7 token copies of it, so I drop Elemental Bond, and then a Mimic Fat. At the end of turn, Nick activates Garolf, making us mill 3. Unfortunately for him, we collectively hit 0 creatures. Nick plays an Island, and goes to combat. The Conduit of Ruin goes at Max, while the Artisan heads at me. I sacrifice two permanents and take the hit for 10, while Max just takes the hit for 5. In his post-combat main phase, Nick kicks Slinvoda, which seems mean, and we bounce all non-seafood-related creatures back to hand. With Zer leaving, the Curator's Ward falls off, and Martin gets to draw two. Nick then passes, discarding down to seven. Martin loses one to his arena, and draws from it, and for turn. He cycles Lonely Sandbar for free because of new perspectives, and then secluded step. He plays a Command Tower, and recasts her in his main phase. He then plays out Solemn Simulacrum, and goes to find a basic, but first discards down to 7, and passes to Max. Max draws, and pays 6 for Bruticlad. Before he moves to combat, and puts that troublesome trigger onto the stack, I use Sundering Growth to take out his commander. Max then gets his Mirror Token, albeit by tapping his Mirror Turbine. He then plays out a Whirler Rogue, making two Thopters, and passing to me. 
I draw for turn, and cast a Miria Shepherd, which Nick is super quick to counter with a rewind, and I pass. At the end of turn, Nick brainstorms. Nick untaps and draws for turn, and plays an Arcane Lighthouse which will hopefully help deal with Xur, and he recasts the Artisan. Since he cast it from hand, he gets to bring back Koslik to the field, and Nick then puts the boots onto the Artisan. He swings it at Max, and Slyn Vona at me. We both just take the hits again, with Max sacrificing two permanents, and Nick then passes. Martin loses one and draws from the arena, and draws for turn. He goes to combat, swinging Xur at Nick, and he finds and puts out Astral Slide from the tutor, and Nick takes one. Martin then moves to his second main phase, and he casts Supreme Verdict. With the spell in the stack, he cycles Polluted Mire, which lets him exile Xur until the end of turn with Astral Slide. He then plane cycles an Eternal Dragon, and exiles the Solemn, while going to find a Plains card for his hand. The board wipe then resolves. Six mana then gets Martin a Sun Titan, and he brings back Rhystic Study from his graveyard to the field. At the end of turn, Solemn and Xur come back, with the Solemn letting Martin go and find a tap basic for the field. Max draws and passes. I draw and play a tap Fortify Village. I then cast Wall of Blossoms, paying the one for the study and drawing as it enters. I then cast Reclamation Sage, paying the study tax again and blow the study up as it enters and I pass to Nick. Nick draws and plays an island. He recasts the conduit once more and this time tutors for Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, putting it on top. Nick then plays a Mind Stone, and casts Garolf again before passing. Martin loses one to the arena, drawing from it and for turn. He plays an island, and goes to combat. He goes at me with the team, with Sun Titan bringing back Solemnity, and Martin then tutors out Faith of the Devoted, with Xur's on an attack trigger. Damage is then dealt, and Martin casts a Demonic Tutor. He finds and casts Decree of Silence, and Max responds casting Supplement Form on my Reclamation Sage. The Sage gets bounced back to my hand, and he makes a token copy of it. The token entering then blows up Solemnity, and the Decree resolves. Max then makes a token with the Mere Turbine, as Martin passes to him. Max draws and casts a Hedron Archive and a Loyal Apprentice. Martin then cycles a Curator of Mysteries, and exiles a Sun Titan until the end of turn. Both of Max's spells get countered with the Decree, and Max then passes with the Sun Titan returning at the end of turn. It brings back the Solemnity, and with it on the field, coupled with the Decree, Martin's opponents are now locked out of casting. I draw for turn, and play Tectonic Edge, passing to Nick. Nick plays an island and casts Ulamog. The spell will be countered, but Nick still gets the on-cast trigger, exiling Astral Slide and the Decree. Nick then plays out a Frost Titan, and keeps Xur tapped. Moving to combat, Nick swings the Conduit at me. I double block with the Angel and the Wall of Blossoms, and Nick decides to not kill either. Before leaving combat, I sacrifice the Restoration Angel to draw three and discard three with greater good. He then moves the boots to the Titan and passes. Martin loses one to his arena, drawing from it and for turn. He then pays five for a Naked Singularity, which I don't even know where to begin with this card. He then casts a Commander Sphere and goes at max with a Sun Titan. Max makes a token with a Turbine, and blocks, while Martin is still deciding what to bring back with his Sun Titan. It's Curator's Ward, which goes onto the Naked Singularity. Martin then casts a Sacred Excavation, and this lets Martin return two cards with Cycling from his graveyard to his hand. Max draws, and passes. At the end of turn, I use my Tectonic Edge to destroy my own Riftstone Portal, so I won't be locked out of my colors because of the Singularity. I untap, and draw playing Seance and passing to Nick. On Nick's upkeep, I get a Seance trigger, exiling Regal Force, which makes a token come in and draws me two. Plus I get to draw a card from Elemental Bond. Nick then draws for turn, and activates his commander, milling us all for three. Max does have some decent creatures finally that Nick exiles, and he gets a pretty beefy zombie token. Nick then puts the boots to it, and pays the 4 mana needed to swing a creature at Martin twice, once for the Zombie, and once for the Frost Titan. The Frost Titan taps down the Sun Titan, and Martin blocks the Zombie with Solemn. He then takes 6, and draws as the Solemn dies. Nick then passes, and at the end of turn, 
Martin cycles Ash Barons and pays the one for the Faith the Devoted's trigger. This drains his opponents for two, and he gains two, and also gets to find a planes for his hand. Martin loses one to the arena, and draws from it and for turn. He plays a planes, and I realize the Force token should be gone by this point. Martin then casts Radiant's Judgment, taking out Frost Titan. He then drops Fluctuator, and swings Zur at max for one. First though, he tutors for Aura of Silence, and puts it to field. At the end of turn, Max makes a mirror token with a mirror turbine, and sacrifices the foundry to make some thopters. Max draws for turn, and reveals a spicy, now 5 mana costing magnifying glass, and passes. I draw, play some petal grove, and pass. Nick draws, and plays a tectonic edge as well. He activates Garolf, and we all mill 3. He exiles the creature he wants to make a 4-4 zombie token, and then once more pays what's needed to swing at Martin. Martin cycles the Eternal Dragon before moving to blocks, and pays the 1 to face trigger to drain his opponents for 2, and gain 2. He then cycles 4 more cards, and drains us each time. Martin then casts Shadow of the Grave, and this lets him bring back all those cards he just cycled. He then takes the hit. Nick then uses Tectonic Edge to take out the Command Tower, and passes. Martin draws his cards, and plays a Watery Grave, taking 2. He goes at Nick with Zur and the Sun Titan, which has Nick block the Titan with a smaller zombie. Martin finds an Estrid's Invocation with Zur, and has it come in his copy of Faith of the Devoted. With the handful of cycle cards he knows that he can do for free, or next to nothing, and the ability to drain us all for four each time, we all realize we're pretty much done for at this point, and scoop it up. Game review time! So I'm gonna keep this one pretty brief because my office is about a billion degrees, and I'm sweating like crazy with the air conditioning unit off. I probably shouldldn't have used the Sundering Growth on Max's Bruticlad that second time, and instead saved it for something on Martin's side. Martin had a significantly more threatening targets that I should have been thinking about, but hindsight is 2020. I enjoyed seeing Max's commitment to the Fairy Artisan, but unfortunately a play like that really telegraphs what you're going to do. You're not going to have any of your opponents playing creatures when you have seven of them on the field, and as a result, he ended up with just a bunch of 1-1 flyers. Martin played his Zerdeck beautifully, and I wish my Gabby deck performed as well as it did. I guess one of the drawing points for Zur is the fact that there are enchantments like Faith of the Devoted, and there's also the fact that Zur puts out an enchantment that costs 3 or less onto the field, which, in a cycling deck, is a lot of key pieces like Astral Slide and Solemnity. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.